Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to your JavaScript tutorial series. This video, we are going to talk in depth about functions. And then in the upcoming next section of videos, we're going to go through everything you need to know about functions. So this video is going to be the concept and the next video is going to be the code. So yeah, if you're looking for the code, you want to check out the next video. But I recommend you stick through, through this one because we're going to go through a lot of material that's going to help you throughout the rest of the series. Now, before we get started, check out our sponsor, Dev Mountain. Are you looking for a JavaScript web development bootcamp? What about an iOS bootcamp? Dev Mountain offers classes online and in person with housing at no additional cost. Learn how to build real world applications and get a job in the industry through Dev Mountain's career centric program. Whether it's web development, iOS, user experience, or quality assurance, Dev Mountain has a class for you. Let them know I sent you their way and they'll give you $250 off the tuition. Link in the description. So functions are a very big deal in JavaScript and it's important that you understand how they work. The very first thing you need to know is what exactly a function is. A function is basically when you define a section of code that can be called or invoked. So think of it like this. This is your function and you have some lines of code in here and rather than using those lines of code over and over and over again, you can just call this function multiple times. So here we have one call, here we have another call and so forth. So you can kind of think of a function as a process that will sometimes take an input and sometimes give an output. So it's kind of like this. So if we zoom in on that a little bit, we can get input and it'll do something with that input and then it will return an output. Now the input, the stuff you pass into the function is known as arguments. Then you have the function body, that's what it does, the code, and then we have the output, which is known as the return. So that is basically the concept of what a function is. We've used functions so far throughout the series, but now I want to get in a little bit more depth. So what we're gonna talk about now is first we're going to create an example function, talk about the different pieces, and clarify some terminology when it comes to arguments and parameters and all that stuff. Now there are a ton of different ways to create functions inside of JavaScript, so I'm going to basically teach you the default, which is a function declaration, and in the upcoming videos we're gonna talk about the variations. So what it's going to look like is you're going to have the function keyword, then you're going to give it a name, the identifier. In this case, we could say it's called square. And what this will do is it will square a number or multiply it by itself. Then we put parentheses and we put any variables we're going to need in this function inside of these parentheses. So for example, we could just say X. Then we have what's known as the function body, which is indicated by curly braces. So we have an open curly brace and then we have a closed curly brace. And then inside of the curly braces is where we put the code that belongs to this function. So this is the function body. So what we can do is we could say return X multiplied by X. So what that'll do is it'll take a number such as five that's going to get passed into the square function, which will look like this. And the return, what you get back is 25, five times five. And you can do something with that value. So you can assign it to a variable or you can output it to the console or whatever. You can pass it as an argument, whatever you need to do. So here we are calling square and we're passing in X. The thing you need to understand here is that this X here is different than this X here. They are two separate variables. So you could use whatever variable name you want here. It just has to exist. So for example, we could say, let x be the value five. And then we could pass x into this function call. Now, when you are passing something into this, it's known as an argument. But the actual variable inside of the function is known as a parameter. So argument is when we're calling the function. Parameter is inside the function declaration. So you can kind of think of it like this. We have parameters which can contain values, so we have basically a variable, and the arguments get passed in to those parameters, whatever value is in that variable. So the value of x gets passed into this variable x. Now one thing about JavaScript is it's very flexible when it comes to functions. So when it comes to arguments, you can pass less arguments, you can pass more arguments, and so forth. So for example, we could call square and just leave the parentheses empty. Or we could call square and pass in multiple numbers. Or we can even pass in a string. So how does this work? How is it possible that we can pass in multiple things, even though it's only accepting one up here? 
This is in contrast to many more strict languages, so if you're coming from C++ or C Sharp or Java or something, this is not something you can do. So it might be a little bit weird if you're new to JavaScript but have some other coding experience. But basically what's going to happen is if you don't assign a value for a particular parameter, it's going to be undefined. If you pass multiple arguments and there's not enough room to store them all, then the, these ones will just be ignored. There actually is a way to access those extra arguments through an implicit arguments parameter, but we're gonna get into that in a future video. But for, for the, the general purpose here, these values are not going to be accessible in any of the parameters we define up here. So this value five will get assigned to X. These will not be assigned to anything here. So when it comes to functions, there's a word you should know, and that is function overloading. The concept of function overloading is that we can have multiple versions of a function. Well, this is not exactly possible with JavaScript. That's because when we're doing overloading in other programming languages, the different types of arguments passed in will determine which version of the function to call. So we might have a square that takes no arguments, and we might have one that takes three arguments, or whatever it might be. But because JavaScript allows any number of arguments, there's no concept of function overloading. Now we can mimic function overloading, so it is a topic that's still going to come up with JavaScript, but it's done in a different way. So basically you need to implement the functionality for any number of arguments that might be passed into these parameters and whatever type they might be. That's because there's only one square function that exists. So if you need different versions, you need to basically create the logic to make two versions inside of this function based on the values of the, the parameters. So we might be getting into the weeds here, so don't worry about it too much, but I just wanted to clarify if you, if you know of the concept of function overloading, it doesn't exist in the same nature that you would expect coming from a different programming language. The next thing you need to understand is that in JavaScript, functions are known as first-class citizens. And this is just a really confusing way to say that functions are objects. So what is the significance of the fact that functions are objects? Well, it means that we can treat functions as if they are any other objects, and objects have special capabilities. For one, you can take an object and assign it to a variable. So functions can be assigned to a variable. We can create an array of objects. So in theory, we could create an array full of a bunch of different functions. We can make objects be assigned to the properties of another object. So with functions, we can assign them to properties to create methods. We can take objects and we can pass them to functions. Well, we can do the same thing with functions. We can pass a function to a function. And this is the basis of what's known as a callback function. So if you have a function and as an input, it takes a function and then inside of this function, it'll execute that function. That is a concept known as a callback function. And I'm sure we'll talk about that much more in this series. Another thing is that objects can be returned from functions. So we can actually return functions from functions. So not only can we take functions as input, but we can output functions. And we'll actually go over a popular function known as bind that will return a function. So we're gonna get into all of this in this video series. All right, so that should be a pretty good introduction to function concepts. What I'm going to be doing now is in the next video, we're going to go over a little bit more concepts, get a little bit more into the concept of callback functions, as well as the concept of passing by value versus passing by reference. And you'll know what I mean by the, the quotes in the upcoming video. So check that out, that should be pretty helpful. And then after that one, we should be getting hands-on with these functions. So check it out and please be sure to subscribe as that really helps out the channel. And I can really use your help. I'm a, uh, you know, one of the weaker channels out there. So yeah, could use your help. All right, see you in the next one.